Do you notice a specific body part, a physical defect, or even an imagined physical defect? Not just noticing it, but thinking about it throughout the entire day. Maybe even avoiding going places so others don't even see this. Spending hours hiding this perceived flaw in order to find some relief. Oh, and does this cause extreme anxiety and depression? If so, you may be struggling with body dysmorphic disorder. Body dysmorphic disorder. This is a condition in which a person is extremely anxious about an imagined physical defect, or it could be a real minor defect that others often actually can't see. People with this disorder can perceive themselves as ugly and often avoid being seen by others. Some may have plastic surgery to try to improve their appearance. They tend to check their appearance often throughout the day. They may even try to camouflage or alter to make sure that others do not see what's happening, to not see these defects or perceived defects. They may go through lots of different cosmetic treatments to feel some relief. Friends or loved ones are frequently perplexed. They're like, I can't see anything. I know you keep telling me something is there, but I literally can't see it. Even if I had a magnifying glass, I cannot see what you're talking about. But it doesn't matter because the individual who is struggling with BDD sees it. They feel it. It's on their mind all day long. So in their brain, how do you not notice this? I have a spot here. How do you not see it? You see this thing on my chin? I literally see it every day, every time I look in the mirror. The most common areas of concern that I see with people who have BDD or body dysmorphic disorder are skin imperfections. These may include wrinkles, scars, acne, blemishes of some kind, their hair. This might include their head, their body hair, or even the absence of hair. Facial features. This may involve their nose. Could be any shape of their actual face. Is it larger? Is it smaller? Is this side bigger than this side? Even my ears. Is my ears like too far out? Are they too far in? Is this one further out than this one? Other areas of concern can actually be like sexual organs, muscles, thighs, buttocks, breasts and even the presence of body odors. BDD is chronic, which means long-term. This disorder affects men and women equally. It usually begins during the teen years to early adulthood. So what are the symptoms of this? People with BDD have inaccurate views of themselves. I mean, that's the biggest part. This can cause them to avoid other people. It can lead them to harmful behaviors, meaning they may be doing surgeries that are unnecessary to correct this problem. Some of the warning signs that a person may have BDD include the following. Frequent thoughts about appearance. Duh, we just talked about that. But this needs to be at least an hour a day. But realistically, individuals who struggle with this, it's like hours, not just an hour, it's hours. It could be all day. It could be in their sleep. It could be in their dreams. Spending a lot of time staring in the mirror or catching themselves in different reflective surfaces. They may be fixated on looking at this perceived flaw. Or in some cases, people hate the mirror. They don't even want to see it. They don't want to see that part because it makes them feel anxious. They may be engaging in repetitive, time-consuming behaviors, such as looking in the mirror, picking at their skin, trying to hide or cover up this defect. Whether it's makeup or it's using a scarf or it's putting a hat on or it's trying on different types of clothes to make sure they don't see that part that they just really can't handle or they don't like. They may be constantly asking for reassurance. Do you guys see this? Do you not see it? They know they're gonna keep getting the same answer, but it doesn't matter because in their brain it feels so absolutely real that the answer from somebody else that says, what are you talking about? I don't see it, gives them probably a second, maybe even five seconds of reassurance where their brain says, maybe I'm okay, but I still see it and it's horrible and everyone thinks that I look horrible. They may be researching the internet to see, do other people have this problem? How can I fix this problem? And the problem isn't BDD, the problem is the perceived flaw or defect. And like I said, people can have real defects. They can have a dimple 
they can have something that happened to them where one of their ears is bigger than the other, but it's so slight that others can't see it. Individuals may start having problems at work or school or even in their relationships because they cannot stop focusing on this defect. It's on their brain all day. It's affecting their job. It's affecting their work, their relationship. They feel so self-conscious. They don't even want to go out in public. They don't want to feel anxious around other people. Sometimes hours of preparing just to go out to make sure they look appropriate. They may be consulting with medical specialists, plastic surgeons, dermatologists to find ways to improve their appearance. Subscribing to certain channels or news stories of like, how do you fix this problem? How do you make sure you have the perfect type of skin? How do you make sure you don't go bald? So how do you tell the difference between someone who's just unhappy with a body part or their appearance and somebody who might have body dysmorphic disorder? Many people are unhappy with some part of how they look. I mean, if I had to have a guess, I would say probably 100% of people could pinpoint one thing that they don't like about their appearance, something, but they're not thinking about it all day long. The biggest difference, however, is the amount of time and energy spent thinking about this body part. It interferes in their day-to-day -day functioning. It causes significant emotional distress. But individuals who have that, like, I just don't like this part about myself. I don't like that I have dimples. Um, they're unhappy with it, but they're okay. They're not thinking about it. They're moving on. They're going through life. They may notice it every once in a while, like, ah, yeah, there's those dimples that I really just don't like, but they're not feeling anxious about it. Some can feel a little self-conscious about the way they look, obviously, but they're still living life. They're still moving forward. They're not consumed by this. To actually have a diagnosis of body dysmorphic disorder, you need to spend at least one hour a day thinking about your appearance, about the perceived flaws, and there is a preoccupation with these perceived flaws that interferes with day-to-day -day functioning, meaning this causes significant emotional distress. And at some point, you need to have performed repetitive behaviors in response to the appearance concerns, meaning you're going to the mirror to check, meaning you're going to the mirror to fix, meaning you're putting your hand here to hide. Body dysmorphic disorder has a high amount of individuals who have depression. And no wonder, it can feel so hopeless because they feel like everyone's seeing it, everyone's noticing it. Even if they're staying in their house, they're all by themselves, they still feel it. It's not about other people. It's about them and how they're feeling. Because you would think like you could just sit in your house, lay on the couch, watch TV, who cares? But they're feeling it, they're thinking it, maybe even obsessing about it. So what's the treatment for this? The treatment is cognitive behavioral therapy or CBT. This has shown to be super helpful in treating BDD symptoms. This is one type of treatment for BDD that is supported by research because we know the way that we think is going to be the way that we feel. So if I think a certain way, I'm gonna feel it. We need to challenge our own thoughts. And challenging doesn't mean no, I don't really feel that. No, I'm beautiful. That's not challenging. CBT focuses on the thoughts, the cognitions, the repetitive behaviors, the triggers, such as the excessive attention that individuals may give to their specific perceived flaws. Typically, the therapist will identify with you and challenge your thoughts. They'll go through what's called unhelpful thinking styles. You can look it up on your search engine, but they'll see what you're doing. Are you jumping to conclusions? Are you using all or nothing thinking? Are you using what's called emotional reasoning? My body feels a certain way. It's tricking me that my brain must feel the same. I feel a certain way. So it's tricking me that the thoughts I'm having in my mind must absolutely be true. You're identifying these unhelpful thinking styles and hopefully at the end, developing more flexible beliefs about yourself and your appearance. Individuals are also asked to gradually participate in more and more challenging situations. So kind of like doing an exposure, we want you to decrease the distress, the anxiety, and respond differently to the way that you normally would want to because you feel like people are looking, because you feel like you can see that spot and it's so absolutely real and it's bothering you. We're no longer going to fix it. 
We need you to start working on the way you're responding to these triggers. The more your brain knows you are no longer giving in to the behaviors that you do, you are no longer giving in to the thoughts, to the fears, to the perceived threats. Individuals may even learn how to decrease these avoidance behaviors. For example, I'm gonna be looking at people in their eyes. I'm gonna make sure that I'm not hiding with that scarf anymore. I'm gonna make sure if I don't like my dimples, I'm gonna smile real big, make sure everyone can see. I might be practicing the way that I'm comparing myself to others in the room by challenging my own thoughts. Sometimes the way I think about challenging is with Judge Judy. You are standing in front of Judge Judy. You have to absolutely prove that the thoughts in your head are true. What is your defense? What are you going to say? It can't be, because I think so, because I feel it. it has to be, here's the evidence, here's the proof, here's a lot of that evidence. But what is the other side? You can defend yourself, but maybe you have some evidence that goes towards your thinking. Ultimately, is Judge Judy going to laugh you out of the courtroom? Is she gonna say, sorry, feelings aren't facts. So why are we responding to a feeling? Why are we responding to a perceived threat? Sometimes because you don't know it's a perceived threat, you feel like it's a real threat. It's your job to find the difference. It's your job to start challenging your thoughts. When someone uses avoidance and these compulsive behaviors to decrease their anxiety, they actually make the BDD worse because it says, good job for keeping yourself safe. People today didn't notice that thing. You did really good. Do it again. You protected yourself today. Good job for hiding or good job for not even going out. It's gonna make you think you did the right thing because you got that anxiety to go away. Individuals start learning to deal with these triggers, these perceived threats, without responding to it the way they normally would. For instance, if I'm worried that I'm losing my hair and I do a lot of behaviors to make sure it doesn't happen, I hide from the public, I cover these spots that are going bald, it might actually be happening. Who knows? But either way, I'm challenging my own thinking. Challenging my own thinking by action and thought. My action is, I'm not doing any safety behaviors. I'm leaving the house. Yes, I can do my hair, but I'm gonna be walking around the grocery store. I'm gonna make sure that people see me for me. They might see those spots in my head. I'm like, yep, there's the bald spot. And I'm challenging my thought. They might look at me, maybe smile, and my brain says, they're judging me. I'm saying, okay, Judge Judy, what you got? Let's prove it to her. They judging you? Did they say they're judging you? It can't be because I think they're judging me. They smiled at me. They look at me. I think they looked at my hair. No. What's the evidence? What's the facts? If we don't have that. We're not responding to it anymore. We're saying, sweet, they may or may not be looking at me. It's quite possible. We absolutely don't know in this moment, but I'm not changing any behaviors to try to fix the way that I'm feeling, fix the anxiety. I'm doing what's called jumping to conclusions and I no longer am falling into this trap. Sometimes the brain freaks out. You're supposed to be protecting. What are you doing? But the more you're no longer feeding that, the symptoms start decreasing. Thoughts will start slowing down. Often BDD can have a co-occurring diagnosis of OCD. Did you know that these two are different? But this is why I created my online course for OCD. It takes you through understanding yourself, what the treatment looks like, assignments, worksheets, videos. I'll leave a link to this course in my description below. So questions. So here's my question for you. Do you struggle with BDD? What part of your body do you focus on the most? Also, if you have any success stories, let us know. I want to know what's worked for you so you can help others who are watching the same video. Thank you so much for watching this and I will see you next time.